this episode, we're going to talk about a really important concept for the math section of the SAT, the idea that you should pay attention to the order of difficulty. And this is based on the concept that math questions come in blocks, and within those blocks, the questions are in order of difficulty. And based on this fact, there are three strategies that are really worth keeping in mind. First of all, easy questions are easy. Second of all, hard questions are hard. And finally, you should have a target and really stick with it on the math section. Let's look at that idea up here and the three strategies based on it in more detail. So questions, first of all, come in blocks of two types. The first type is multiple choice. So you might get a cluster of questions that are like the ones you're used to seeing on standardized tests, multiple choice. There's one other kind of block of questions that you'll also see, and that's grid-ins, which you could also call free response. They look like this, and the idea is for each of these 10 questions, you're going to have to look at each one and say grid in your answer. So for instance, if the answer is 5.2, you would bubble in 5 period 2. If the answer is 11 thirteenths, actually that one wouldn't fit. So let's say you got 1 thirteenth as an answer. You get 1 divided by 1, 3, and bubble that in. So these are the two kind of blocks you'll encounter. And within each one, it'll go from easy to hard. Now, since there are three sections on math, here's what you'll see more specifically. One section is going to give you 20 multiple choice questions. Strangely enough, they give you up to 40 bubbles, but you would actually quit at 20. Another section is going to give you 16 multiple choice questions. So even though they're very generous and give you 40, you'd quit right here after 16. And then one final section would mix the multiple choice with the fill-ins. So you'd have eight multiple choice, and you'd quit after these eight, and then with the rest of your time, you would have the 10 free responses to deal with. Now, like I said, within these blocks, you're dealing with an order of difficulty. So the first one-third of a block is easy, the next one-third is medium, and the final one-third is hard. So let's have a look at what that means. There are going to be three strategies. And I mentioned these at the outset. Easy questions are easy, hard questions are hard, and you're going to want to stick to your target. Let's look at each of these in more detail. First of all, easy questions are easy. Um, questions appearing in the first third of a question block are easy. So if you're on that section that has 20 multiple choice, the first third, which is about seven questions, you should expect to be really doable. So what's the implication of that? You should not hurry up and fast forward through those first seven or so questions. They're the easiest points you will get on the entire SAT. So really give them a shot. And even if the question that you see in the first third that gives you trouble, you know, inspires you to want to skip it, stop, read it again, and give it a try. A lot of times students will balk at a question early on and I'll say, really, like, have another look. And when they do have another look, they can't believe they were thinking of skipping it or can't believe they actually skipped it because it was doable. So it's nice when you're in the first third of a block of questions, whether it's the first third of a multiple choice block or the first third of a free response block, you know the question is easy, so you know to give it another shot if you at first think it's hard, because it's probably not. Let me give you an example of a question that is early and people might be inclined to skip, but they definitely shouldn't. So we know we're in the beginning of the section, because here we are at number three. Number three is pretty close to number one. And a lot of people will see a question like this and immediately say, oh, I'm so bad with exponents, I totally don't remember that chapter from Algebra 2. But, first of all, you might be able to think through it 